Hello and welcome to episode number 271 of the TEW2020 Challenge Run. We are here for the second of two back-to-back -back premium live events. And yeah, it's WWE Evolution. All the women are here. And we are going to get an A-list celeb real quick <laughs> because I can afford to. And I want the show to do well, so fine. Last year's Evolution had some big moments. Becky returned. Um... Sasha won Queen's Crown. Um, Asuka vs. Mackie, Kyrie vs. Raquel. Kyrie is the only one of those four that are in the tournament this year. Can she do one better than get to the final this year? We'll have to wait and see. But, without any further ado, let's jump straight into the show. So on the pre-show, Battle Royal, Tag Team Tile Opportunity on the line. Um, basically, everyone who's not booked and a couple of people had to borrow from NXT to fill it out. 30 women. <laughs> yes, I can fill 30 women like this. Alba Fire, Emma Reporter, B Fab, Candice, Florence, Gigi, Haley Paul, Hams Katana, Hikaru Shida, JC Jane, Katana Chance, Caden Carter, Kelsey Cook, Kylie Ray, Mandy, Marika Mina, Mizuki, Morgan Daniels, Naomi, Aaliyah, Skylar, Raquel, Ruby, Scarlett, Tam, Tegan, Tiffany Strand, Tony Storm, and Zia Lee. And the final four are Mandy Rose, Hikaru Shida, Alba Fire, and Tony Storm. And Alba gets eliminated first, then Tony, and it comes down to Mandy and Shida, who's going to get the title opportunity, the opportunity to go be the tag team champions at SummerSlam. It's Shida. She eliminates Mandy Rose to win the thingy. <laughs> and Scarlet got an injury, but it's nothing serious. There's a retracted index finger. Nobody cares. Um, Goldberg's now out for six months because of the spinal injury he suffered at King of the Ring. Um, I did surgery on him and it went well. And he's now out for six months. The same can't be said for poor Madcap Moss, who is out for one year, three months. So, <laughs> rip. Mania 40. Maybe Madcap will get his moment then, I guess. We don't get the big intro. Hoping up tonight's biggest matches, Rhea Ripley, Sonya Deville, Dakota, Shotzi, Kyrie, Asuka, Utami, Liv. But we're actually not going to kick off with Queen's Crown tonight. We're going to kick off with the tag team match, pitting Bianca Belair and Nova Nebula against Alexa Bliss and Ivy Nile. Gets a 77, that's fine considering that um, Bianca's working injured and Ivy is not popular, so... Yeah. Just a nice wholesome babyface win to kick off the show. Bianca and Nova finally get the win. Made sure to have Bianca pin Alexa because I don't want to pin Ivy in a first match. She gets a 32. 72 for Alexa, 75 for Nova, and an 83 for Bianca Belair. So a big win. Bianca finally gets her revenge on Alexa. Nova, maybe that will, she'll consider that success, but she didn't actually pin her, so maybe she's still going to have that holding over her head. But the team does win, you know, Bianca and Nova. Because even though they are two single stars, this is they've teamed more than Alexa and Ivy have, so... Oops. Huh! 90. Okay, I'm, I'm slightly less worried about the Queen's Crown final rating now. Because Asuka's in it. She gets a 90 out of Liv Morgan, you know? She beats over Spin Kick in 12.41. And 73 for Liv, 94 for Asuka. And obviously, the best wrestler in the women's division right now, Asuka, is going on to the final of Queen's Crown, where she'll face either Yutami or Kairi. So an, a Japanese star will win Queen's Crown. Who will it be? You'll have to wait and see. Uh, apparently this went too long. Okay, fair enough. They have great chemistry, though. I thought they both had the chemistry to do slow build and call in ring, which they do, but I guess not for 18 minutes. But it is Kairi Sane who beats Utami with an insane elbow in 8.21. I believe that's only the second time she's ever been pinned. I believe Sasha did it. 
at Judgment Day, and now Kairi here. But it's fine, because look at Yutami's rating, she's smashing it, she's now up here with the best. She gets an 86 and a 93 for Kairi, confirming that... Well, but if you go very back to episode 1 of the save, we had the Kabuki Warriors, they were the tag team, they were going to win the tag team titles at Backlash. We have the Kabuki Warriors one on one with each other to determine the winner of the 2022 Queen's Crown. Will it be Kairi or will it be Asuka? Got to wait a little bit longer to find out. But first, I knew the crowd wasn't going to like this match because they're all deemed unimportant by the game, which is fine. So that's why I shoved it here. It's the NXT Women's Title Fatal 4 Way. Roxanne Perez, Scott, so Sylvana Lucas, Fallon Henley, and Electra. Savannah comes in as the champion, but she's not leaving as the champion because look at the ratings here. 34 for Fallon, 35 for Sylvana, 38 for Electra, 47 for Roxy. So Roxanne Perez wins the championship because she's the best choice of the bunch. She pins Sylvana with the Pop Rocks, 10 43. Yeah, it's a match between unimportant people. It's fine. I knew it wasn't going to do well. That's why it was in the spot here and not in an important spot on the card. Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't think this would do very good. Again, why it's this early on in the show. Um, Julia and Micah go at it. From their feud. And obviously Julia's the one who's going to pick up the win. She's actually scored less. She gets a 70 and Micah gets a 72. So, like... Meh. I, maybe I misjudged that whole situation, but... I'm sure I didn't. I'm sure they both just got very good stats. Because neither of them have got 70 popularity, I'll tell you that. Julia's got like 60, and Micah's got like 54, so good ratings from both of the women here. As two Japanese Joshi stars go at it. Which is interesting, because out comes Stephanie next. Stephanie comes to the ring, she's got a bag. Just like, ladies and gentlemen, Evolution 4 is in full swing, you enjoying the show tonight? Well, don't worry, you consider this kind of like a little intermission here. Like, we've got, still got three big championship matches to come later on tonight. But first, we've got some women's bi women's division business to attend to. So we're going to bring out Brandy Rhodes. Out comes Brandy, and... <laughs> I did this mainly for the surreal visual of Brandy and Stephanie in the ring together. I was like, hey, look at this, this is fun. You know, Stephanie and baby Steph. And Brandy's like, you know, for years, the uh, women's division... You were calling out for an evolution, and we finally got one. Four all-women's pay-per-views in the history of WWE. Isn't that special? Well, as you can see, a lot of great foreign talent on display here tonight. The main event, the Queen's Crown Final, will feature two Japanese warriors, Kairi Sane and Asuka. You saw Julia and Micah, two Japanese warriors. You saw Yutami, Japanese warrior. And of course, how could I forget this woman? Out comes Io Shirai. This isn't actually her because I can't even book her on screen. This is a face morpher. <laughs> Just to get her on screen because I feel like she should be here for this announcement. And Steph is like, yes, Io soared to new heights here in WWE. And we do wish you a speedy recovery and want to see you back in the ring as soon as possible. But that paved the way for the future of WWE and the future of Japanese women's wrestling. And she pulls out a belt. And she's like, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the announcement of the NXT Japan Women's Championship. Now, NXT Japan is something that myself and Hunter have been working on for a while now. We're not sure when it's going to be officially launched, but we may as well crown its women's champion right here tonight. What do you say? Well, let's get going with the two of the premier athletes in the new NXT Japan women's division going at it face to face to determine the first champion. Please welcome to the ring Miyu Yamashita and Veni. And they come out. And yeah. So <laughs> after the Joshis dominated my shows and you know just scored like the best ratings out of all of my women's division. I was like yeah I should probably open up NXT Japan now. I just hire a bunch of young, really good Joshis. And obviously there is men down there as well. But <laughs> yeah, NXT Japan exists. 
and we're going to crown it. We're not actually in the game going to crown the first women's champion because of the whole, you know, moving titles about bullshit and borrowing people. Because these two are in NXT Japan. And, like, I don't want to call them up, put the belt on them, and then they'll go back down and vacate the belt. I'll have to move the belt over and give it back to them. Just, I'm just going to make this a non-title match and then give her the belt when after the show. But... 51, even with, you know, no investment because they're both unimportant in America. Because I think they've got like 7 pop in the States. They still get a 51 despite getting the, the penalty. And I did put, I tried to cheese it by putting Brandy, Stephanie and EO, in quotes, um, at ringside. Because they are all recognisable, but that didn't take the penalty away. Anyway... Miu Yamashita I'm going to have as like the face of the NXT Japan women's division because she is in the game, is incredible and she's really good in real life as well as while I was watching her on AEW I was like yeah this was after I'd already made NXT Japan but I saw her on Dynamite I was like yeah that seems like a good choice to make my ace. I really want to cash her as my male ace but he's written to New Japan for four years so <laughs> so I have to find somebody else but yeah, Miyu gets a 61 and a 59 for Venny. And Miyu wins and becomes the inaugural NXT Japan champion. So now I have an excuse to bombard my company with Joshis. But then we move on to what we're going to be bill as the main event matches. Starting with this big dream tag team match. Trish and Lita, Sasha and Indy. The rivalry is really with Trish and no, the rivalry is really with Lita and Sasha, and Trish and India here for the ride. And the match gets a seventy-five. I didn't expect, I didn't expect it to do too good because these two are old, and don't wrestle all the time. But Trish and Lita pick up the win, because Trish pins Indy with the satisfaction, which obviously Sasha's not happy about. She's like, "Oh my god, uh, this is bullshit." Ninety-three for Sasha, sixty-nine for Indy, fifty-eight for Trish, and a fifty-two for Lita. So it was actually Trish and Lita that get the last laugh here at Evolution over Sasha and Indy. Or is it the last laugh? Who knows? Me, I know. <laughs> anyway, SmackDown Women's title on the line. A feud that got so randomly personal. So very quickly. Shotzi wants to destroy Dakota because Dakota destroyed her tank. This isn't the normal fun loving Shotzi you're going to get. This is going to be an ass kick in Shotzi. He's here to take that smack to win his title, but Dakota Kai is not going to give it up easily. And who leaves Evolution with the title? 81. That's a pretty fine match, to be fair. Dakota wins. 12-33. Shotzi, again, I tried my best to build her up as, like, a credible threat, but you're going to have, like, people that you don't expect to win. It's fine. Again, I'm not... I, I do moan about predictability when they do random matches like John Moxley versus Brody King. I'm like, well, what's the point? Like, we, we know what's happening here. But also at the same time, like, you do have to stock challenges, especially if you've got a heel going on a month, a couple of months rain. Like, you've got, they're not going to be able to, not every single challenge is going to be like, oh, this person could win. They're going to have to have some stop gaps. And that's fine. It's about the stories and the friends we made along the way. And Shotzi actually lost a few <laughs> because the kill destroyed the tank. But, oh, well. 78 for Dakota, 73 for Shotzi. Good match. Did you did your job, girl? That's fine. Here's a segment. Kayla catches up with Bianca and Nova. Okay, like, you know, girls, impressive win. Is it safe to say that your issues with Alexa Bliss are now over? Bianca's like, girl, at the end of the day, that depends if Alexi stays in her fucking lane as the GM. If she's gonna keep sticking her nose in her in my business, she's gonna keep getting this work. And I was like, you know, Bianca, I'm so happy for you. I'm so glad we got the win tonight. But it's still, there's still something missing. I still feel like I need to be the one to pin Alexa's shoulders down to the mat. So thanks for the help, girl. And I appreciate it. And if you ever need a hand from me, you know where to find me. But no, I don't think my issues are done with Alexa. And the Nova sort of wanders off. Kayla watches her leave. She's like, Bianca, your future? She's like, girl, I can't tell you. But I'll tell you that SummerSlam's coming up and... 
I think it might be time to get more championships around my waist. What do you say, girl? It's beating the GM, gave me a line for title shot, it should do. I'll be watching this main event. Hype segment. <laughs> it all comes down to this. Bailey and Cora. Best friends turned enemies turned best friends turned enemies. We don't know what they are. It's complicated. That's their relationship stars. But they're here. They've come together. Cora slimed Charlotte at her <laughs> um, jubilee after she won money in the bank. And it ended up with this championship match here tonight. Charlotte and Jordan defend against Bailey and Cora in an 83 rated match. Charlotte apparently carried this. Is she that far ahead of Bailey? Oh Christ, she is. Okay. <laughs> match goes for 13 31. And it's kind of even, you know. Bailey and Cora surprisingly working well as a unit. Charlotte and Jordan, you know, they've been the champions for a while now since Backlash. They sort of know what they sort of know their shit. And yeah. Match goes down. Bailey's in the ring with Charlotte. And she's gonna hit the uh, Bailey to Belly or whatever, but Jordan attacks her from behind. The referee doesn't see it. And Bailey collapses the floor and Cora's like, referee bitch, you're gonna you're gonna disqualify her like you did not see that bitch, hello. And referee's like, What? I didn't see anything. And then Charlotte locks in the figure eight. And Jordan goes to pull Cora off the apron. But Cora like fights her off, takes her down. And it's like cheering Bailey on the end. She's like, come on, Bailey, come on, Bailey. Bailey's screaming in pain. And she's like, ah, fuck. And of course, I was looking, she doesn't know what to do. She's like, shit, shit, shit. I I've used my breakup. I can't come in and break the pin. Because apparently that is a rule. And it's actually convenient for this finish, you know. And of course, like, she picks up a towel. She's like, goes to throw in the towel and. The referee, the fans like, no, 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 no. And Bailey's like, no, no, don't you fucking dare. Of course, like, oh, you're, Bailey, you're hurting. And in the end, she does throw in the towel. Charlotte submits Bailey. That, that, I guess that's the finish I have to put in because I can't do that. I guess it still counts as a submission victory. But Charlotte and Jordan leave with the belts again. Defense number three of the women's tag team titles. 54 for Cora, 75 for Bailey, 66 for Jordan, and 89 for Charlotte. Fuck me. Okay. But obviously, Bailey's not happy with this outcome. Nor should she be. And then Cora's, of course, sad again as Bailey huffs off. Of course, like, fuck, I fucked up again. God damn it. This isn't as detailed as the one I did on, at King of the Ring because there's more of a long-term story there that I wanted to tell more than there is of these two. But I'm going to do the, the quick interview with the two finalists. Jimmy Smith does it this time instead of Pat. And they talk about why they want to be queen. Asuka's like, I am the best wrestler in this division. I want to be the champion. I need to fuck everybody up, you know? I'm out on my own now. My, 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 my underlings left me. That actually does bring me to something I want to talk about in a minute. So remind me. And Kyrie's like, well, I was I used to be considered one of the best West women's wrestlers on, on the planet as well. But somewhere along the way, because I was a good friend, I got labelled as an underling. This is probably all with Japanese subtitles, you know, as most of my ones premise with the Joshis are. It's like I got labelled as an underling because I was a good friend to the Royal Women's Champion. But I need to prove that I'm more than that. I need to prove that I can still hang. I won the first May Young Classic at this very event, and I'm going to win the Queen's Crown at it as well. Last year I came, I was runner-up. This year I'm going to win the whole damn thing. So what I was saying is, seeing Asuka and Munch in the protege days was a thing. Um, I did go through and assign um, proteges to people on my roster, but like it wasn't just me going through and going, oh, I want, I want this young guy to have a mentor, so put them with them. It was ones where, like in in reality that would be the relationship like for example indy and sasha i've had them on screen together for two years basically so it's perfectly reasonable to, in my mind to think that 
Indy would look at Sasha as a mentor, and if like if there were interviews in this world, she'd be like, "Oh my god, I learned so much from her. I picked her brain, yada yada yada." So I'm like, "Yeah, so I'll oh, set Indy as Sasha's pr- protege, Jordan is Charlotte's protege, Micah and Julia are Asuka's, you know, just people that like work with it, elder members of the roster." And I'm like, in reality, I could see the relationship being like he's passing stuff down to them. I sort of want to set that up in the game. It's not me cheating, it's more so I think that's how the game should work, making it more realistic. Like, yeah, I don't know. But I I, I think it makes sense anyway, and I think it's fun as well, because it gives me more potential options to, like, make people grow. Anyway, I'm 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 now curious. I now think this might get in the 90s. I should have had this main event, but both Rhea and Sonya are under 30, and I've got two main eventers, un- I've got a main event with two people under 30, so I just thought I'd get that out of the way here. But this should really be the main event. 88, there, yeah, that's fine, I guess. For some reason, it's not as good as Asuka. Asuka and Liv, despite, you know, Kyrie getting an 88 and Asuka getting an 85. Kyrie did it, though. Kyrie's the Queen's Crown Champion. She beats Asuka in 2043 with the insane elbow. And she's now earned a shot at the SmackDown Women's Championship. An 88 for Kyrie and an 85 for Asuka. Kyrie and Asuka, they've had their differences in the past, you know, when Kyrie betrayed her for Rio. But I like to think they're, that's been long enough and they respect each other again now. We are going to have quote unquote Io come out and celebrate with Kyrie because I want Io factors in onto this show. It's not actually the the character in game called Io Shirai because I can't book her in segments. But I want her to have a presence here. She's going to fulfill the rest of her injury after this. I just thought, you know, it would make sense to have my figurehead, who is a female Japanese star, introduce the NXT women's NXT Japan women's title. And then I thought, yeah, well, Kairi's won, so she'd be out there with her as well. But yes, Kairi. Queen, well, I guess the pirate queen now. Queen of the Seas is going to SummerSlam. In Boston. Have I said it's in Boston before? Gillette Stadium. That's where we're holding SummerSlam. Main event time. I don't think this will do great. Because I had to script it. Because neither of you got great. So I, got, I think Rhea is over 60. So she can call in ring. I think Sonya's still at like 55. So again, I don't expect this to be great. The only reason it's in this spot and not the Queen's Crown final is because they're both under 30. And it helped me tick off that goal. I am officially going to lower this back down. I'm sick to fucking death right now. Fuck off. 